So I finished with the wire wrapping of the ROM board. Uh, this board's meant to carry the Apple II uh, ROM set programmed into 2716s. Uh, it's based on a ROM board design that Apple had created. I modified it slightly to make it only for 2716s. Uh, it's hand wire wrapped. We've kind of looked at this in previous videos. I verified all the wiring. I put the parts in. Really, the next step is does it work? Uh, so I've got my Apple II sitting here. I have a parallel ASCII keyboard. We looked at this in a different series. This is a Keytronics parallel ASCII keyboard that looks to be pretty compatible. I have cut the uh, pin on the connector here that brought the minus 12 or plus 12. I don't remember which. Uh, here's what I'm looking for that brought the minus 12 onto the board. I don't need minus 12 for this board, so I've just cut that pin off of this connector down here. I'm going to have to put this in slot 1. It won't fit in slot 0 because these very long pins here hit the power connector. This board should work in any slot because it's just decoding addresses. So it is in. I will have to manually reset the machine. I've got a wire here to pin 3 of the socket and I can just ground it to an IC pin uh, ground and that should reset the machine. The keyboard's hooked up. Speakers here. I know I get video. Let me go ahead and touch ground. And you heard it beep. Boop. Apple II. Uh, there we go. So the board must work. Uh, because we are loaded up into BASIC. At least enough of the board works to get the machine into BASIC. I assume all the ROMs can be selected. Uh, I don't really know. We can look a little more closer at the board. Now we'll get the machine started and I'll swing the camera around so you can see the screen. Uh, I know the whole motherboard here doesn't fit in, in frame. I'll move it so it does. So. <clears throat> This board implements the D0 through F8 ROMs, the six ROMs that are normally in this set of sockets back here. Let me try to squish or bring this all forward, hopefully, so that you it's in the frame. Normally, the Apple II ROMs sit here. On the Rev0 board, you can't even put 2716s in here. These are hardwired for 2513s or, or some other ROM for mass programmable ROMs from Apple. So, in our build that we've done here from the blank board up, uh, pretending it's 1980-ish, this would have been an approach I could have actually taken, and that is this is a vector Apple prototyping board that's literally from the late 70s. Uh, I picked it up new old stock recently. So this board was available at an electronics uh, distributor. You know, uh, there was a couple of them around the town I grew up uh, within a 50-mile drive. The 2716s in 1980 were available to me. EEPROM programmers were available to me. Uh, building an adapter so I could read these ROMs was available. I had already built adapters for other things uh, to read the ROMs out of them. So I, and I was wire wrapping back then. So this is definitely something I could have made in 1979-80. Definitely something I could have produced then. Uh, with the idea being here, uh, you know, I bought the blank board from Apple. We assembled it. We got it work. You know, it seems to work. We found a keyboard for it. We've got it attached here. It actually seems to work. Uh, Apple branded power supply and basic and ROM, which plugs in. Let me see if I can scoosh the board forward enough that hopefully you can see that card plugged in there. Let me move everything back. And we'll power up here again. And we'll reset the machine. There is no reset switch on this keyboard, obviously. Uh, it just doesn't exist. So uh, one of the things we'll be doing in the near term with this board is we'll be adding power on reset to it. We'll be adding the video killer mod. 
There's a couple of mods at least I want to do to this board that'll that'll make it more like a Rev One, uh, which I would have done back in the day. So anyhow, let's write some code. Five four x equals thirty two to one twenty seven. We'll do that. Oh, this keyboard's not bad to type on. Oops. So I know I didn't say it. This was the first power up of this board, and it worked. So I've had a really good run of luck here. The Apple itself worked first time. Uh, that really comes down to the attention to detail, the planning I did, uh, and the assembly over multiple sessions, even though I did do all the soldering basically in one mega session. Uh, the board came up and worked. This wire up card also came up and worked, but I've been working on this card for over a week on and off. Uh, it may They may not show up here, but there's little light blue X's on every wire that has been put into place. I made plenty of mistakes. Luckily I caught them apparently all and corrected them. Uh, I used wrap IDs on the back of the card so I, to help with identifying pin numbers. So, you know, I, I've been lucky a couple times here. Uh, this is a parallel ASCII keyboard that's correct to the era. Uh, it was non-working when I received it. I've had to strip it down, clean it, and uh, the foil and foam pads underneath all the keys had to be replaced. And luckily it's a Keytronics keyboard and uh, Techelec, Techselec can provide those. They, they you know, it, you know, somebody in their home, I believe, is actually manufacturing the placement ones. So, uh, you know, this keyboard could well have been acquired. This has a little bit later date code. This has got a 1983 date code on it, so it would be a little bit later than the build here would have been. But something like this would have been available. It's just a stock parallel ASCII keyboard. So anyhow, I'm rambling away here, line 15. Next, oops, next X. Line 20, print, is it colon? They put two prints in the same line? Yes. 25, print, hello, Apple, A-P-P-L-E. Uh, <laughs> I wish you could see what I was editing here because it's a mess. Low Apple 2. Oh, I keep hitting the plus sign with the return key. Let me list this out. And 35. Go to... Lots of typos happening here. List run. I'm going to go handheld mode here. So I'm going to pull the camera out of the overhead mount. We can get a little bit better look at the system here. As it's sitting on the bench. I've got the back raised up just because there's uh, electronic components and sockets laying around behind. Uh, the back corner here is some of the wrap wire and tools I use to wrap the board. I know we're getting a lot of glare, but there it is. Let's go ahead and look up at the monitor screen I'm using. There's the little program we just typed in, and I've got run ready to go. Let me hit enter. And there it is running. Uh, let me do a break. Let's see if I can type single-handed here. So, 30, print, chr, string, well, it would help if I actually spelled it right. I'm trying to read on the camera screen here. Seven. I don't need the semicolon. Ah, oh, shift. Seven. Wow, what are the odds I got that right? Probably not really good. So character string seven should produce a beep. If we come down and look at the keyboard here, there's a couple things of interest. The break key here actually sends a control C, so it will break the program running. You can also do control C at the keyboard. I can do a control G and get a bell. And G should be the seventh letter of the alphabet. 
uh, and that's why Control G generates uh, the bell. So the character string seven there that produces the bell. Syntax error. What do you mean syntax error? There it goes. Oh, it sounds like a heartbeat. Lordy, that's irritating. Okay, I'm going to unplug the speaker just because I find that highly irritating. So really, the last thing for me to reproduce, I need to think about whether I'm going to build a linear power supply or not for this. I potentially could have bought a switcher back in the time. And maybe I've got something here that is age appropriate. I mean, this is definitely age appropriate, but it's Apple branded and I don't intend to use an Apple power supply in the end. Uh, as a system, bringing this up without things to test, like in previous videos, we actually used an Apple II keyboard. We're using an Apple power supply. I actually had a set of Apple ROMs. So I haven't had to do an all ups test of this at once. Uh, although, as we've seen in the videos, the system itself worked first try, this ROM card worked first try, the keyboard worked first try after being repaired. So the odds were good I could have got this thing running, you know, back in the day. Uh, you know, I built an LNW80 main system and expansion interface. Also, just ordering blank boards from LNW and then ordering parts over time and stuffing them. And both of those work. I had no, no issues with them. Uh, so, you know, the ability for me to have started with a blank board back in the very late 70s or early 80s and get to the point where I had a, a running Apple II isn't that far-fetched. Uh, for my LNW, I actually picked up a parallel ASCII keyboard surplus that I cut all the traces on the back of the, the board, uh, remo removed all the electronics from it, cut all the traces, soldered wire wrap pins to all of the contacts on the back of all the character or switches. So I had a, a sea of wire wrap pins, and then I wire wrapped the matrix for the Radio Shack Model 1 keyboard into that to a, a pin header and that pin header then had a, a cable that ran off to the LNW so I literally hand wrapped a keyboard back in the day so you know there's nothing I'm building here I wouldn't have been able to do back then uh, I'm just glad things have actually worked although it makes for less interesting video anyhow I will hit the brake key here and it'll stop and we'll run it again and I'll hold down and hit control C. It's the same character. Break is just a control C. Does the same thing. Uh, I'm actually very pleased this keyboard's just working. So this is the first actual test this keyboard has had. Uh, of actually sending it sending ASCII characters. After we rebuild it, we looked at the strobe output on it just to make sure every key turned a strobe. But beyond that, you know, I've done no testing until literally the live testing here. Uh, I guess we wrap this one up here and I will see you in a future video.